Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and we're back into the Grow B project and I had just output the contents of a Google spreadsheet row using the GSpread API which I am using in place of GData for Python 3 compatibility reasons and uh, it output it as a Python list and uh, that was great and I felt I had an iterable object here and in Python whenever you have something that you can iterate through you can generally uh, say something like for a row which is an arbitrary name in the object colon print convert to a string a row and uh, I have learned that that is not an iterable object, which is a uh, really big uh, disappointment. Uh, there's a number of options here, but going back to the documentation, uh, there's something here that is that is very appealing. Uh, the get all values um, method of a worksheet object, which is a list of lists. We don't want to do it because it would clobber the memory of the web server if it were a 10,000, 100,000 row spreadsheet. But nonetheless, uh, it's so tempting, we want to go look at that. And uh, how do you look at it? Well, you know, it's just like uh, what we were doing previously. So I edit those out and I unedit these out. And instead of uh, row values in a particular row, I just insert that method. And I am printing it here. So that should be a list of lists. And so it is. And this is beautiful because uh, there's code in there that is figuring out where our boundaries are because in a spreadsheet really there are uh, in this case a thousand rows that you can scroll to and they're unused and similarly it goes all the way up to Z in the columns and something has to know what your boundaries are and so there's there's code and logic in here that knows what your boundaries are and we want to take advantage of that and uh, since the last video I had been uh, poking around a little bit and uh, this is you know this is having enough information to do deep investigation so this is a something we installed and the place it's located is this path which I just happen to know how to CD into and if I look at the contents of that directory there's a bunch of files there and what we're looking for is uh, 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 the definition of a method inside a class so this is going to be a little grepless, and we go grep, which is a global replace, but we won't be replacing, we'll just be searching. And what we're searching for is that thing that I just, you know, uh, used. And uh, let's see. Now, it's going to be a recursive grepping, so I have to put hyphen r in there. And then it's where I'm looking, which is dot, which stands for current directory. So Clearly it is inside the models.py file, so we can use less, which is a reading, text reading program. It's less intrusive than using Vim to just look at a file. Models.py. Here it is. Now you'll find in Unix and Linux, all these search commands are, you know, kind of like VI. Not everywhere, but it's a pretty standard. You type slash and you're starting a search. And once again, I will type in get all values backspace because it might not have the open close parenthesis. Hit enter, and there it is the definition of get all values. Now, what I'm going to do now is study this code to see how it gets the boundaries and to see if there's any other options I, I have. I can see there's get all records as well. Who knows what I'll use, but it will take a few moments of looking, so I will pause. Okay, in studying get all values, I find the techniques that they're using are exactly the 
risky memory techniques I want to avoid. And so I did another search on count and found that there is this concept of row count and call count. So let's uh, jump to the top of the document and do that count search again. And there they are, uh, def row underscore count and call underscore count. So I'm actually going to just print out those and see if I get the boundaries that I want or I get those annoying Z and 1000 boundaries. So we go back to here and uh, we have the worksheet object already and all I need to do is print some uh, methods of the worksheet object. Print, and I shouldn't have to convert to a string. It should handle integers just fine. WKS. Uh, let's start with a uh, call underscore count, and then print WKS dot row underscore count. So what do you think? It's going to be the smart boundaries or the stupid ones? I think it's the stupid ones because I saw all the code in uh, the list all values function. Let's take a look. Yeah, 26 which is Z and 1000 which is the bottom. So at least we've got some uh, something to step through and we're going to have to write our own function here. Uh, returning the cell value as we go until we encounter an empty. And that's my plan, and I'll do another pause, and we'll be right back. Okay, I don't know why I really had a pause. This should be a great example of why Python, because Pythonic thinking really should always suggest the next thing. So, uh, it's really uh, stepping through. We're going to set some values. We're going to do uh, C, uh, it's not really a range, it's a limit. C limit equals something, and we're going to do a row limit equals something, and of course those somethings are WKS dot call underscore count, and WKS row underscore so now we have those sitting around. We don't really need to display them. And uh, these for loops in Python are just really so easy. We're going to introduce the concept of a range, though, because we only have the upper uh, limit of the range. So we could say uh, for, and it's going to be a, a counter, so we'll use the stereotypical i for uh, integer increment uh, in range. And uh, there's a 0 versus 1 thing. Now we had a 26, uh, 26 letters in the alphabet. So it could be a 1 base range. I'm going to do range 1, comma. Uh, and we'll do uh, C limit. And uh, that means as it steps through, uh, no, actually, I think I'm going to start with R limit. I'm more ready to think about rows. So as it steps through to a thousand, I am going to pull those uh, values, which is uh, a row equals wks dot row underscore values, and then I, and uh, I guess we can just print it right in here, right through the loop. Print string, because it's going to be a list object, we need to convert it, a row. Print might actually do it on its own, I should test that at some point. But uh, if a row, because there's a chance it's going to come back as an empty list, and remember empties, even an empty list uh, evaluates to false. So I could keep it like this and you would see a whole bunch of stuff scroll past, but I want to actually uh, acknowledge the boundary. So we go if a row colon, then we print it. 
and we don't print it unless. Okay, so that's a testable thing, isn't it? Python, we should get the rows. Hey, okay, we see the delay. That is an excessive delay. We definitely don't want that. Stepping up to a thousand. And you can see the downside of all this back and forth communication between your uh, Raspberry Pi server in this case and Google Docs off in the cloud. So, ooh, I don't even want to wait for this to finish. Let's control C out of that. Clear. Oh no, we don't need that clear. Okay, so uh, if a row print and the first time it encounters empty, break out of the loop. Oh, this should be a great tutorial. Oh, lovely. Look at how much was demonstrated right there. This is exactly what we need to move forward. And uh, we've demonstrated uh, stepping through all the rows in a spreadsheet. Uh, and speeding things up by just stopping when we encounter empty. And it doesn't look like we'll even have to use the column limit, so I'll be able to get that code out of there in a second. So I'm going to hit a key, and I will just end this with the commit. Dropping out into a shell, git commit am stepping through all rows. Push. And there we have it. Thanks for joining me and uh, hope to talk to you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.